What is up, Remix friends? I'm so excited about Remix Conf EU, and I'm really excited to be speaking with you all about full stack components. So let's go talk about taking co-location to the next level. Just the one thing that I wanted to talk about really quickly is I'm working on epicweb.dev. If you haven't seen that yet, definitely give it a look. It's my full-time thing now, it's awesome. And uh, all of my slides and everything for this talk are uh, on my GitHub, so you can take a look at that there. So this talk is gonna be a demo of components that include both the UI code as well as the server-side code, and we're gonna be doing a lot of coding, and so, yeah buckle up. We're going to be talking about Remix, of course, our favorite UI framework and, uh, well, full stack framework, not just UI, and that's part of what this talk is all about. So um, Remix allowed us to marry the back end and the UI in a way that has never been done before uh, with the loader and action and um, our, our UI all in the same file. And this is a pretty simple uh, demonstration of how that works from a route perspective. So we have our projects route and um, here we have our loader to load those projects, and we've got our form to add new projects and uh, the, the back end piece for uh, that mutation. But sometimes we have UIs that aren't like so um, URL, URL centric. Uh, for example, the Twitter like button, whenever I click on that like button, that's not going to take me somewhere else. I, I don't only render that on a special page. Um, uh, like that it has a specific route. I render the like button for every single one of the tweets that are on the page. And, I, and so that doesn't really uh, work very well as something that you would like stick in a loader or an action um, for a particular route necessarily. Um, and here's another example of a combo box that's doing a search. And this is the thing we're actually gonna be demonstrating today. So um, I've got an implementation of this app right here. We're not rendering the combo box yet because we are gonna build it together. and. Uh, connect it to the backend, and it's going to be sweet. So that's it. It's demo time. Uh, so the first thing is we've got this app up and running right here. Um, we're in the 01 before version of the app, and we're in the app directory under routes, and under this uh, resources directory is where we'll find the customers. So we're going to have this um, route for slash resources slash customers. And that's gonna be the API route that we're gonna be using to um, go get a bunch of customers. Now, one really cool thing about Remix is that if you don't have a default export of your module, then Remix will treat your module like a resource. And so what we mean by that specifically is I can say export an async function, whoops, a function, come on, there, called loader. And here I'm going to return JSON and that JSON actually is gonna come from Remix Run node. And we'll say, hello world. And if I save that and come over here, I can go to resources, customers, and I'm gonna get hello world. Now there's nothing special about the resources directory other than the fact that my editor seems to like giving that a special icon, <laughs> but there's nothing special about this. We could call this whatever we want. And it just so happens that the way I like my URL for this uh, to work is to have a slash resources and that's it. Um, so the wh wherever we want that URL to be, that's where the file is going to be. And so by having a loader export, but no default export, this is just a regular um, request for like an API request. So with that in place, now we can build some UI that inter interacts directly with uh, this loader uh, that makes fetch requests. But what's really cool about Remix is that we can actually add a bunch of other exports to this as well. We can export uh, const koala equals Cody. Like it doesn't matter. We can do anything that we want to in here and Remix will just ignore it in its builds. And so what that means is we can actually export a component in here that consumes this loader. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, and because I know that you probably don't care to watch me write a bunch of JSX, I've actually uh, written all of the JSX stuff there. So here's our loader. It's just what we had before. But then we got a bunch of other JSX stuff in here that you, like I said, you probably don't care to watch me do all that. So skipping over the JSX bit, the uh, most important and interesting bit here is we're using this use combo box, which is uh, a downshift hook. Um, downshift is a library I built years ago when I was at PayPal. And um, it's for making this combo box experience for us. And all we need to do is provide it with the items and we can respond to input value changes as the user is typing. So that's perfect. That's exactly the two things that we need. And with that, uh, we're exporting this combo box, but we're still 
just a resource route. There's nothing special going on here. This is literally just hitting an endpoint and getting whatever the response that we sent back uh, was. So let's do a couple of things with this endpoint though. Um, so we'll, we'll flesh out this, uh, this loader. So for one, um, I personally don't, whoops, <laughs> I personally don't really want um, people to be able to um, hit this endpoint uh, who are not authenticated. So we're going to say require user and we'll pass the request. Now we get that request in our loader, of course, so we'll pass that request. We'll use loader args, there we go. And with that now, I can still make a request to this, but if I go incognito, I'm gonna get redirected to the login. So that's nice. Remember, all of your loaders are basically API endpoints anyway. Anybody could curl that URL and get access to everything that you have at that URL. So you do need to protect uh, your loader data. And this is how we're gonna do this here. So the next thing is I'm gonna get the uh, URL from the request.url, turn this into a URL object. So I can get the query from URL search params.get and we'll just do a full word query here. And we want the query to be either, uh, in this case, it's either a string or null. We'll go ahead and default that to a string. So it's always gonna be a string. So now I can do uh, search customers. And this is implemented using uh, Prisma and SQLite is how this is set up. But this search customers could be an implementation that like makes a fetch request to another downstream service or like uh, a Rails or PHP backend or whatever. Um, that, that part's not important. Just the fact that we have some mechanism for sending this query along to where we're going to actually query for the customers. So we'll pass this query along and we'll get our customers. These are the matching customers back. And then with that, we'll send that um, in our response. So now if I uh, hit that, I'm not going to get anything. If I say query S, then I'm still not going to get anything because I messed something up. So no, that that is the correct query. Um, and query right here and query right there. Uh-oh, this is not good. So we're going to URL search params. Oh, shoot. I'm going to have to start over. Oh, I know what it is. I'm not going to start over. I forgot to await. Uh, silly me. So now we're going to get the customers. There we go. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got all of our customers there. Then we can query for specific ones and we can just get all like an array of all the customers that match. So that's exactly what we're looking for for the API route. Now, here's the special sauce. This is the, what's going to actually connect us to um, the UI piece of this um, is our use fetcher. So Cody the Koala, hello, here's Cody. Uh, Cody is going to tell us we need to implement a uh, fetcher here. So we're gonna say fetcher, or we'll call this uh, search customer fetcher. You can call it whatever you like, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> and we'll say use fetcher right here. And then to uh, get the data that this fetcher is gonna be interacting with um, to be fully typed, I'm going to say type of loader. So there's my loader right there. I get uh, type safety for my search customer fetcher. And that search customer fetcher is going to have a data property on it. and if that data property exists, it may not because on the initial render, we're not like calling this loader right from the start. We're calling it when the user is searching, right? And so if um, there is no data, uh, then that's gonna be undefined. And it, But if there is, then we're gonna have customers. So we'll have data Elvis operator customers. And if that doesn't exist, then we'll have that uh, those customers be an empty array. And with just that change, now TypeScript is a lot happier because this uh, type uh, definition right there, our customers is gonna be an array of customers. And um, now this, this type is correct. And so our selected customer is gonna have a correct type and the type we pass along to use combo box. So that's really cool to be able to have full type safety across the network for a component that's gonna be used all over the application. Who knows where it's used? So the last piece of this is actually making the request. And for us to actually make this uh, fetch request, we just want to make a request whenever the input value changes. And Downshift provides this API for us to know when the input value changes. So what we'll, we'll say is the search customer fetcher. And there are a couple options on here. We have dot form, which we could use if this was a um, explicit 
um, the submission that the user is like clicking on a submit button. That's not the case for us. This is an imperative mutation or an imperative query that we need to make uh, as a result of some other user interaction. So we can't use form. There's also load, which we can use to uh, make a get request with query params, but we have to serialize those ourselves. So I don't want to do load. I'm going to do submit just because this makes it um, a lot easier to serialize those query params. And uh, actually, GitHub Copilot is pretty close here. The la um, this is completely Complaining right here because the query can only be a string. It can't be assigned undefined. An input value on the changes that we're given is uh, optional. It may not be there. So we'll just add um, a, um, I forget what that syntax is called, coercion or something, <laughs> something there. If uh, input value is null or undefined, then we'll end up with an, an empty string. Now, the last piece we need to add to this is we need a method of get. And that's it, or lowercase get here. And that is the case because we have implemented this as a loader. Now we could actually implement this as an action and have our method be really anything but get, like a, a post or a put or something. But I'm happy with this being a get. And then, um, and like for query endpoints, that's typically, it makes most sense to be a get. Um, but yeah, you do you, however you want to. The cool thing is that you don't have to jump into 30 different files or, or multiple repos to make this change. You can just one day decide, you know what, I want to do this as an action instead and just switch it right here in the same file, which I think is rad. Uh, okay, and then the last thing is the action. Now this action is the URL that is going to be hit with this query. And the URL is the URL for this loader, which we've already established is inside of resources customers TSX. And so we're going to say slash resources slash customers, okay? And that's it, we have finished this feature uh, and it totally works, but we need to actually render this component. And this is this is the pretty cool part. So like, so far this kind of feels a little bit just like your typical Remix route and everything because you've got your loader, you've got your type of loader, like everything feels very similar to what you're used to in building a Remix route. But the cool part is that we can actually use this component in uh, anywhere in our application and it will stay connected to this backend loader. So in particular, the part of the application we want to use it in is inside of our sales invoices new when we're creating a new invoice so we can choose which customer we want. And so if we come down here, we've already got Cody helping us out with um, the props that we need to pass and everything. So we've got our customer combo box, which we are going to be importing from routes, resources, customers. So Typically, I don't recommend uh, doing any imports from the routes directory. In, in general, I just think that is not a really safe uh, way to do things. But this is one exception um, that I think is, is totally legit and it is totally awesome. So that's all that we're gonna do in uh, the customer combo box um, piece here on the new route. And with that in place, if I come back here and go create new invoice. Then I've got my customer combo box. Now we, we currently have this set to true, but the, uh, and we can fix that here in a second. But the cool thing is that this functionality currently totally works uh, as I make changes and I can select customer and all of that stuff. So that's that's pretty rad. We've got a component that is connected to its backend and all in a single file. So the last thing I want to do is just fix the spinner because that is bothering me. And so if we come down here, we've got our show spinner and our pending state is going to come from our fetcher. So we'll have our search customer fetcher. Uh, you got to spell it right. There we go. Search customer fetcher dot state. And the state can be idle, loading, or submitting. Pretty much if it's loading or submitting, we know that we're in a pending state. So normally I just determine whether we're in a pending state by saying, is the state not idle? If it's not idle, then we're, we're pending. Uh, there is a subtle difference between submitting and loading, uh, where loading is going to get some data, submitting is when the user is submitting data. Um, but in our case, um, I think it's reasonable just to say, um, if the state is not idle, then we can show the spinner. So with that in place now, we can um, see that there's no loading state. But if you watch carefully, you might actually see a flash of loading state. Uh, and that is not awesome. Uh, so there are a couple options here. You can add a, like a transition delay or something. But the problem is if um, the, the request takes like within you know 50 milliseconds of whatever transition delay you put in there, you're going to get a flash of loading state. It's really basically impossible to avoid. Uh, without a little bit of extra help. So basically what we need is uh, to say, 
don't show the loading state unless, um, you know, let's, let's put a delay in because that does make sense. Like let's, uh, if it's within 100 milliseconds, you know, don't show any loading state at all. But if I do show any loading state, then we should keep the spinner hanging around even if it's finished. So keep the spinner hanging around for an, another like 300 milliseconds or something like that, uh, just so that we don't have a flash because it's, it's way better to show it for longer than you need it than to just show a flash of loading state. And there's a, a package built specifically to solve this problem. It was actually built for my website by uh, Stefan Meyer, who helped um, with implementing my website. And it's called Use Spin Delay. And we'll pass that along there. It has some good defaults. We'll just keep those. And with Use Spin Delay from the um, Spin Delay module, now we're going to avoid that flash of loading state. And if we do have a slow 3G network, um, then we are going to get a nice uh, pending state, which is exactly what uh, our users would expect. So with that in place, we, we're solid. Like this is, this is really, really great. You could render this component all over the app and be certain that it is um, connected to its backend. On top of this, you could actually also package this up in an NPM package and then expose just a couple of things for people to uh, go into the Remix config, um, add their routes uh, option here so that they, um, and they call into your, your thing so that you can hook up the route for the API route and then they can just start using your component and it's all magically connected to the backend, which that's, that's pretty interesting and I'd love to see somebody try to do that. So with all of that said, let me wrap up with a last couple of thoughts. So in review, Remix allows us to create resource routes by simply having a route with no default export. That's what makes a resource route. We can export anything we like as long as it's not a default export. So other components and utilities that integrate with the resource route directly. And it's, so it's not just components. You could do hooks. You could do really anything like uh, a, a button that links to uh, a PDF generator and the loader is like generates the PDF, whatever, anything that uh, ties specifically to this resource and um, and just keep that co-location. And, and that code co-location makes it easier for us to maintain the software in the long term. This is really, really cool and exciting. I love this. So the last thing that I wanna to say to you all is you're inspiring. Thank you very much. See ya.